Let's start on the Arsenal side of this. Unai Emery, was he a bit too aggressive in his setup, especially considering the opponent, Manchester City? No, I don't think so, because I think if you just go there and, and set up to defend, you're just, you're just a sitting duck. Mm. Uh, what, what cost them was, was basic errors, mm. you know, particularly Iwobi. I mean, you go to Man City, you, you, in the dressing room as a player, the first thing you're saying to each other is, listen, guys, you know, we do the basics well, we keep it tight. The old saying in football's always been, you keep it tight for the first 15, 20 minutes, you frustrate the crowd, and you make a mistake like they did uh, so early on, then, then it's difficult. He tried to get his two front men into the game, uh, but what happened was, you know, Guendese and Torreira, they didn't have bad games, but they got swamped in the middle of the park, and Lechsteiner, well, he got caught out every time, but that's no surprise. He's the weak link in that, in that defence. Yeah, Manchester City found matchups that they loved. And on the outside, there were moments in which was uh, Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva, one of them getting on the inside shoulder of Nacho Monreal, the other one running in behind interchangeably. And they did that time and time again, getting on the wrong side of Guendouzi. And so Guendouzi is late tracking back. Nacho Monreal is late tracking back because he's checking to the ball and, and, and trying to step to it. And in doing so, they leave space in behind. Now, you think that that would just be on that side. It was happening the same way on the other side between David Silva and Raheem Sterling, which led again to the Raheem Sterling, uh, Sergio Aguero second goal. It was an assist by Raheem Sterling from him running in behind. Those matchups simply exposed Arsenal because they were trying to keep things in the middle. Now everything was open in the outside. They brought themselves to the outside. Now everything was open in the middle. They were late tracking to the ball in the middle. They were late tracking to the ball on the outside. And Manchester City simply dominated. Uh, Arsenal, I think the 3-1 doesn't really tell a story of how this game was dominated by Manchester City. There was a moment there in the first half, maybe 10, 15 minutes, where Arsenal were part of the game. After that, None of Arsenal, everything Manchester City. But, I mean, they've got injuries, Arsenal. Yeah. But they're not, they're not, they're not, this is not their battle. No. You know, they, they're, not in that, they're not in this league at the moment. They may, they may well be again, like they once were, but they're not at the moment. But they're just not in this battle. Their battle is, if they could, if they could have nicked a point today, then they nick a point. But, but they, they were never going to, really, apart from City sloppiness in the first half. The one thing with Man City was, the one thing that intrigued me and, uh, was how they operated Fernandinho. You know, when, when, uh, when they didn't have the ball, he dropped into a back four and Laporte went to left back and Walker to right back. And when they did have the ball, he stepped into his natural position in the middle of the park. And, and Laporte went to the left side centre back and Walker to the right side and Otamendi was pretty much left on his own. I thought it was, it was very intriguing. Of course, most of them all, almost all the guys played well, but I think, honestly, we could put Fernandinho on that graphic in the back four, but he really spent most of the game uh, in, in the midfield, this was a, you might say a little complicated way to do it, but it's just the way uh, Guardiola wanted to do it. But the one thing I'd say is, is this Man City team for me would not operate. You can, we can hail Aguero, we can hail Bernardo Silva and the David Silvas and the De Bruyne's, but this team would not function in, its, in the same manner without uh, Fernandinho. And Absolutely I, not. And I, and I agree with you, but in looking at what Fernandinho was doing today, and we were speaking off camera about this, you couldn't possibly do that against a team like Liverpool, for example. It, 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 it just doesn't seem that the ground that he would have to cover, getting into the midfield and then playing that supporting role, and then once you lose the ball, then getting into an area in which he can defend, a team that likes to press higher up the field like Liverpool would not allow that to happen. So I think it played into the hands of Guardiola of trying this out with Fernandinho, because Arsenal is not quite the team that is really going to threaten you in trying to press higher the field because they simply don't have the numbers, nor do they have the personnel in order to do so. Uh, one more thing on Arsenal. Mesut Ozil goes unused again today. They're down by two goals with half an hour to go. If you're not going to use him then... It's just not breaking news. <laughs> I mean, but I was shocked. Well, I, he's he, not going to play in a 4 He had all two. three subs. Unai Emery had all three subs left after, uh. after Aguero gets the third. And to not use him? What am I missing? <laughs> or what is Emery missing? The last couple of months. Yeah, <laughs> you've been in a you've been in a time war. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Look. Then why put him in the 18? It, it, well, listen. Wasting a spot listen, on the bench. Last week, he I can't remember who they played off the top of my head. He was captain. Yes, he was at mm -hmm. home. Yeah. And now he's an unused sub at Man City. I I, I understand. He doesn't he doesn't want to use him at Man City because he's not. They're going to spend. And I, I can't remember the stats. You know, at least. 
two thirds of the time without the ball. It, it's just Mesut Ozil and Unai Emery are just a car crash at the moment, and Arsenal Football Club are feeling the pain of that with with Mesut Ozil's salary. The truth is that Mesut Ozil has no real future with Arsenal when Unai Emery is the manager of this team. Uh, you could have had the choice of many areas that you could have addressed in the transfer window. You decide to go after a player like Denis Suarez, who essentially plays a very similar role as to what Mesut Ozil plays. You're saying, you know what, even if it is on a loan, I'd rather have this guy than have you. Even though we're paying you all this money, it doesn't matter. You're not part of the plans. That is very clear. You're losing Aaron Ramsey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't start it's, him today. Didn't start. And, and you know, if he's taken a move, he deserves that. It's his choice. You've got Henrik Mkhitaryan to still come in, and let's be frank, he's now at his second Premier League club and hasn't shown. We would call him a playmaker. He's not quite the same as Mo Ozil, but he's a playmaker. He's not a grafter. And then you've got Mesut Ozil himself, and as Ali said, you've got Dennis Suarez. So, you know, this <laughs> It's, and I keep saying this, when people say, well, it's not much difference to Wenger. This is a huge rebuild at Arsenal. Mm. It's, a, it's, it's a huge rebuild, and I don't know if this club have the, one, have the resources, or two, have the stomach, or three, the structure, with Mislint that leaving, and I think Monch is coming in. But it's, it's, a long, it's going to be a long old process for Unai Emery. One more thing on City, Kevin De Bruyne, what'd you make of his performance today? Not better, you know, mm. I, I still think he's like, he, he looks to me as if a player, he looks like a player that's had injury problems. He just looks at a little, you know, especially in the first half, just lacking a little bit of sharpness. So I think as the game went on, he, he, he found a, a second wind. And the minutes under the belt, for me, are very helpful for him. Interesting, by the way, that Pep Guardiola decided to leave Leroy Sané on mm. the bench. Yep. Uh, and that was looking a lot like a decision that wouldn't quite make a whole lot of sense because you have Lichsteiner, who you can get after in 1v1 situation. But Pep Guardiola knows what he's doing. Leaving Sane on the bench, I don't know if that creates problem for the future, though. Well, Lex Steiner, when the teams came in in the dressing room, he was probably like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> there's no Leroy Sane, but it didn't help him. No. Nope.